Hey everybody, Sean James here from My Self Reliance and welcome to the cabin. Excuse the red nose and the red face, I just washed my face with uh, some snow. Didn't realize there was some ice in there that kind of abraded my nose and my cheek. But anyway, um, that's cabin life. I'm actually heating up water right now on the stove to uh, do, do the dishes. And I wanted to talk about the stove, answer some questions that people have had about uh, especially about how I'm heating the place but also how efficient it is, how warm it is inside when it's cold outside for example and things like that. So here I am by the stove it's at a medium temperature right now it's maybe minus 10 Celsius outside right now got down to minus 15 Celsius last night so I did something that I've been meaning to do for a while and that was to bring my uh, infrared camera and scan the outside of the cabin while the fire was burning and while it was cold outside so that was really interesting to see the uh, heat where I was losing heat where it was cold uh, which areas of the cabin actually were not letting any heat out and which areas let out more heat than I thought so check out these photographs I think it's pretty cool one of the things I learned is that wherever the moss is in the walls with no uh, mortar over top or no clay is actually more efficient or it's not conducting heat out so much as uh, the sections that have clay so this wall for example has uh, moss on the inside only, on the outside it has mortar filling those joints. But what's happening is the heat's getting through and then it's collecting in that mortar and then that's transmitting as a heat spot, as a hot spot. Um, so it is losing heat through there. The spot over here where I actually have the inside and the outside mortared, there's only a thin layer of moss in there wherever the gap was big enough to have moss. Some places there's none and with the clay touching you can see that the uh, heat is transmitting right through that. Now a lot of cabins work in a different way than a traditional home because there's a lot more thermal mass. These logs can heat up and hold the heat and then they can slowly release it. So even though the fire died last night at um, probably 11 o'clock, 11.30, by 6 o'clock in the morning the cabin was still comfortable. It was cold but it was comfortable for sleeping. I had no issues. Cold didn't wake me up and Callie was completely fine sleeping on her bed so uh, a little bit um, cooler than if you're used to living in a traditional home where you just keep a furnace on and it comes on and keeps the temperature at 15 degrees Celsius or something at night but um, something you just get used to when you're living off grid. So take a look at these thermal imaging uh, photos from this morning the fire had gone out at that point so I thought I'm gonna go outside and get some shots of the cabin with out heat without the, the fire started yet and see if there's much heat in the building and where it is, is escaping if any and uh, whether the, the stove and stove pipe still hot so check these photographs out it's pretty interesting I was surprised to see uh, how closely they resembled the photos from the night before so the other questions around that are what am I heating with how much wood am I going through and what's the deal with this wood stove um, so first of all I do have uh, mostly hardwood on this property. It's comprised mostly of uh, sugar maple. There's quite a few red maple. There's yellow birch. And then the odd other tree like uh, birch. Uh, quite a bit of hemlock and balsam fir and things like that, but they're not really firewood. So I'm using those for building materials or just leaving them. Now this year I had to buy in firewood because I just didn't have time to cut. Uh, well, I only bought the property in March and uh, didn't get a chance to cut firewood and have it seasoned. So I've been cutting some trees that are dead standing and they've been great firewood but I just haven't got around to cutting any more of that so I had a whole load of logs dropped off. Um, so that's what I'm heating with but they're, it's local as well so it's all the same species. So the question is how much wood am I going through? Well when I'm here long term I'm burning probably an average of a log per hour. So what happens is at night I let it go out. Uh, so there's so I'm maybe burning three logs over say six or seven hours at night, but then during the day I have to put on at least one log per hour to, to get it up to temperature again. So let's say I'm averaging 24 logs per day, 24 pieces of firewood, and these are 16 inch pieces. So that's 720 pieces of firewood that I need to keep the cabin at a comfortable temperature. And when I say comfortable, I'm averaging probably 20 degrees Celsius. So in terms of cords, a cord of firewood is four feet high by four feet deep by eight feet long. 
and then typically they're cut into 16 inch lengths so that four foot log that would make up the cord is cut into three pieces 16 inches long so based on a 30 day month i'm using an average of 720 pieces of firewood so i'm essentially burning a bush cord a, a month which is a lot so why is this stove uh, somewhat inefficient? Because people are um, going to probably be surprised at the, the amount of wood that I'm going through. Well, there are more efficient ways to heat a, an off-grid home. One of them is a rocket mass heater, which I had planned originally for this cabin. The very first cabin I started last spring for my friend, I was actually planning to do a full heated clay bench, uh, rocket mass style in that uh, cabin, which I may still do this year if I get back to it this year. Um, if not, I am planning to do that in at least one of the other outbuildings, either the workshop, likely the workshop, and uh, the sauna or something like that, or, or one of the other buildings. So I probably shouldn't get all into that right now because I, I need to uh, show you the design I'm planning on using. But check out uh, Rocket Mass Heater or Rocket Stove on uh, just Google that if you want to know what that's about. Or just tune in later this year when I get around to that and you'll see me build one up here. Um, at the wilderness homestead I call it the cabin but I'm probably better off calling this a wilderness homestead because that's really what I'm doing here building the whole infrastructure to live here as a wilderness homestead not uh, just building this cabin okay so back to the stove the stove is so that's one way to be more efficient use a rocket mass heater rocket stove uh, more efficient than this would be a an airtight stove without the glass and with more damper control. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> Careful, the stove is hot enough to burn you still or to make you uncomfortable. What are you doing? Okay, so this stove, as you see, has a glass front, has glass doors. The stove is uh, cast and enamel coated. It's made by Vermont Castings and it's the Encore model. It's more decorative than uh, efficient, although it's big enough to heat probably a 2,000 square foot home easily if uh, the wood's in good condition, if the wood's dry. Um, it does have a fairly good sized firebox being horizontal rather than vertical, but I can get three or four logs in that I can just place in this way. It has these end irons in the front that hold the logs from rolling out. So from that perspective, it's fine. It, it does hold enough firewood. Uh, it does have a damper inside the back here just before it goes up the chimney. Instead, it uh, circles a couple times inside and it burns more efficiently. It burns some of the gases and uh, some of that smoke, uh, some of the solids in the smoke, and then that uh, remaining goes up the chimney. So it is more efficient. So it's kind of rolling around in there and heating up the firebox instead of the chimney or instead of sending the heat directly out. Now, my wife and I bought this stove secondhand. She found it on Kijiji for 140 bucks, so a great deal. Um, it was made in 1986, so these things do last a long time. This damper here, I don't know exactly 100% what it is, but I'm pretty sure that's a fresh air return damper. So in the back of the stove, there's a, a plate that if I remove that, there's actually a duct that I could hook up to go directly outside. If I put a hole in the wall, ran it outside, instead of this stove drawing air from under the door or from inside the cabin and heating that up and setting it up the chimney, it would pull the fresh air in from directly outside and then cycle it without using up room air, which is actually more efficient, but it also creates a, a situation where you might not get enough air exchange in the building and we get um, stale air and you want to avoid that. Now, one of the things I don't particularly like about this stove is I'm used to having a wood stove that has dampers on the front and I like the spiral one, ones that you can turn on both doors or on a single door, I'll have one. So I have no way of controlling how much air I'm feeding this thing unless I open the door and the handle broke off and this handle's broken, but I can do that. So that leaves a little space, the door's open maybe a, a half an inch. So that gives it some air. But what's unique about this stove, again, not something I'm used to, used to having a fire bricks in the bottom and you scoop it out. This has a grate inside. And this is how you clean out the ash. It's got a tray, an ash tray. So what happens is when you open that, there's a box in there, so there, it is fully lined. So the ashes aren't dropping on the ground. If When I have that out, it would just drop into that box and I can clean that out. But when I open that up and open that damper, 
the air rushes in here and then goes up the chimney and then the fire starts raging. So that's the way I'm controlling this stove. And like I said, I don't think that's really proper, but it does work extremely well. I just can't imagine they would design it that way so that you have to open that to vent it because now you have a little bit of a gap behind that pan so the ashes can fall down behind the pan and force me to have to reach in there and clean that out. But it is extremely effective doing it that way. So one of the reasons this stove is not um, as efficient as it could be is because of all these gaskets. When you have uh, two doors like this that close in the middle, it's just like uh, doors, double doors, uh, entrance doors to a home. They can't really seal because they're both operating. Be better if it was one door but what you have throughout all the spaces or all the uh, moving parts inside and here on the door is this rope gasket now i don't know when and if that was ever changed by the previous owners but i haven't changed that so i really should pull the doors off there's actually gaskets even inside in between the glass and the frame here i need to replace those i need to replace these gaskets there's a foam gasket here, I need to replace that. Not a foam, a, a rope gasket. And there's uh, inside in that damper, there's a gasket as well. So I really need to change all those to stop air from just free flum flowing into the stove when I want to damp it down at night. So this here, without that, I wouldn't know what the temperature of the stove is or how it's operating. So I can tell by this thermometer whether I'm I have an efficient fire going or not. So this really should be in the burn zone. I'm letting it die down right now because me and Kelly are about to head out, but it should be in this burn zone. And if it gets up to this area up here beyond 300 or 600 um, Fahrenheit, you get into a temperature where you're at risk of creating a chimney fire because the creosote builds up in there. Now when I'm down here, what's happening is it's an inefficient burn and there's creosote building up inside because it's not burning off. It's too much smoke going up that has particulates in it, so it's starting to collect on that stovepipe. So every day I want to have some fires that get up in this top um, range of the burn zone so that it burns out some of that uh, creosote in the chimney. The pipe really heats up and so does the top part here because the hot air collects up there. You need to have this backstop here. This is temporary. I do plan on doing a clay one or you saw me bring in some copper in the last video or an upcoming video and that uh, copper may go behind here. Had a, a really nice um, subscriber to the channel sent me that copper or gave it to me. I went and picked it up from him. Really, really appreciate that. So he thought I would use it for back here and I still might do that, but I have so many other cool uses for it as well. But you do need a, a barrier, a non-flammable barrier to stop this heat from heating up the wood and potentially starting a fire. So that's it for this video. I hope I answered your questions. If not, uh, just leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to tune in on Fridays to watch me continue with the cabin build, finish the interior, and get to the, my outdoor projects and my out, other cabins that I'm building around the property. Um, so look forward to seeing you up here on Friday. Take care, have a great week.